Howdy folks, got the microscopes out today. Why? Because we're going to be looking at a microscope camera. Let's get into it. I've been wanting a microscope camera ever since I got my stereo microscope. Uh, you know, I paid a little bit extra to get the camera mount for it, specifically for this function. So naturally, it's been something I've been wanting to get now for several years. And I really want to thank Banggood for sending this to me to do the review on. They actually sent another item as well, which is a light. Because if you have a camera, you're going to need good light to take good images. So we'll look at both of these things. Now the main reason I've been looking for a microscope camera is to share stuff on my YouTube channel. Uh, when I'm looking at uh, cool stuff under the scope that I think people might uh, enjoy seeing when I'm trying to describe something on little micro parts or whatever. I think it's just going to add another dimension. But let's get into it. So it comes with a little disc, I assume with some kind of imaging software. Um, USB cable with a standard USB A end on one end and a USB B end on the other. Uh, power adapter with a barrel plug on the end to power the camera. Camera has a little remote. Um, comes with what are these? Okay, so these little things are little adapters, so you can fit the camera into different size scopes. And we're going to see that when we uh, are trying to fit it to the both this one and the compound microscope. And then this is. 0.5. Uh, I don't know if they are called a Barlow lens, but uh, apparently, again, not an expert, but you need these so the camera magnification isn't double of what your actual what you see through the eyepiece. This is supposed to bring the eye the camera magnification to the same level of what you're seeing in the eyepiece, and has a nice. HDMI ribbon cable, so just standard HDMI inputs and outputs, and then the camera itself. Quite heavy, it's not a light little thing. So it's got an anodized, blue anodized aluminum shell, top and bottom. Looks like it's got a tripod mount. Now on the back, there's our USB out. It's got a TF card, so I assume we could probably use a micro SD card in there. There's the HDMI out. So you can feed it direct to a monitor if you want to do it that way. You can record the images or the video, or you can send it to your laptop or PC to record or do video editing or watch the image through your laptop. And then just a bunch of menu buttons. And for the imaging chip, it's got a little screw-on protector cap, and it's a C-mount thread. And there is the imaging chip, and it looks like it's got a little protector glass over top of the chip, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about damaging the imaging chip. And by the reflection I'm getting off of it at different angles, it looks like it's got some pretty good coatings on it. Real quickly show the specifications. This is the uh, link on Banggood's site to the actual camera here. So you can see what the price is, 133 currently. And again, all the specifications are below. If you wanted to check that out, you can see them. Even better I found is if you go right to the manufacturer site. So it's manufactured by a company called Hayer. And here is the exact model. It's the HY2307 camera. They've got more more specifications here, you know, it shows what operating systems it'll work with, it shows image resolution, the actual image sensor, it is a Panasonic, uh, one half point three inch, effective pixels 16 megapixels, 60 frames per second full HD. So let's look at the light now. Now the reason I wanted to get the light is my scope does have a light. Uh, this is the AM scope, it's the SM series head which is very popular and you know there's all different configurations of these but this specific one uh, it's actually got a dual illuminator 
Uh, it's got a bottom one, you put a translucent stage in here, and then it will backlight your specimen. Uh, my wife, that's the reason we got this one, she wanted that. And then of course it's got the light to down light. But when you've got the light coming at an angle like this, you it really casts shadows, especially when you're looking at circuit boards and you're trying to look, you know, solder little things on the other side of a taller component, you know, there's it's dark. So a ring light eliminates that. The ring light sits here and it will evenly light the entire stage area. So that's why I was wanting one of these as well. So these aren't expensive at all. This was under $20. Again, I'll have a link below. And thanks Banggood for sending it to me as well. Now these have got uh, three little screws to lock it into position. There's a little ridge on the stereoscopes that these lock into and the fitment range is 30 millimeters all the way up to 63. This specific one is a 56 LED count and let's just plug it in and take a look at look at them. So we've got a little on and off switch at the back and we've got a variable output dial. So there's maximum brightness and I'll tell you right now it's bright, definitely brighter than what I've got on my scope now. So this is going to be a big improvement. You can get these in two different colors. This is the off-white uh, to match the color of the scope. It's a textured plastic exterior and you can also get them in black. I thought we'd go over the uh, ring light real quick before getting to the camera. As you can see it fits fine on my SM stereo scope. Uh, you can orient it in any uh, direction you want. I've got it so the power switch and the illumination knob are on the back here, but you could have it on the side or the front, whatever works best for you. The color temperature, if you look in the monitor here, as we turn the light illumination right to full or right to off, the color temperature stays the same, which is really nice. And more than enough light at full brightness uh, it's too harsh on my eyes. It's too bright. The other nice thing that I found out, I was a little worried. I've got a 0.5 Barlow lens in here and I thought it might hang down too far, but as you can see, it, it doesn't hang down too far past the light at all and there's still plenty of light getting on the stage. I thought if it hung down too far, you know, it would cast shadows, but it doesn't hang down at all and of course you can use it without the Barlow lens. If you get a stereo microscope, especially a zoom one, Getting a Barlow lens is one of the best accessories you can get in my opinion. Um, what they do is they have the magnification. This is a 7 to 45 zoom stereoscope. So when I put the Barlow in, it halves it to 3.5 to 22.5 times magnification, which is perfect for electronics work. And the other great thing that a Barlow does is when you have the magnification, you double the focal uh, distance between the... Uh, your lenses and the stage. So you've got lots of working distance now to get soldering iron, whatever in here to uh, work on your boards. So really happy with the little light. It's a decent little light for 20 bucks. Now we'll get onto the camera. So the 0.5 C mount adapter that it comes with must be used, one, to fit into your scope and two, to have the magnification. If you don't put this on, well, I've tried it, I've held the scope right up to the eyepieces and you're basically seeing over double the magnification of what you'd normally see in the eyepiece. So this brings it down. It's still, however, uh, at least on my scope and my application, it still is more magnification even with the reduction uh, C-mount adapter on as uh, what I'm seeing through my eyepiece. But again, I've got wide angle eyepieces, so that might have something to do with it. But anyways, on this particular SM scope, with the camera mount, it just slides right in. There's a little O-ring and it slides in fine. Now on your scope, you may have a height adjuster in here. And what this allows you to do is focus, you know, focus your uh, image by looking through your eyepiece and then by adjusting this up or down, then you can calibrate or fine tune the camera to the same focal length. So whether you're looking through your eyepieces or uh, the, you're looking on the monitor with the camera, both will be in focus. If you didn't have a camera mount on your scope, 
you can also mount it to one of your eyepieces. And we'll do that real quick here. Thought I'd just go over size real quick, um, in case you're wondering what this is. 23.1819. So now that you know that, you know you could measure the inside diameter of your camera mount on your scope or your eyepieces to know which adapter ring to use and know if this kit will work. So again, it comes with a 30 millimeter adapter ring, a 30.5, and this one is just over 22. So if you wanted to mount it in an eyepiece instead, you just pull one of your eyepieces out, doesn't matter which side, and then you just find which adapter fits. Okay, the 30.5 is too big. Here's the 30. Slides in fine. And we're just going to take that out. And now we'll slide it into the eyepiece here. And you can fine tune the focus again. And there we go. Nice sharp picture. Let's zoom right into this chip. When it's in the eyepiece, it wiggles a bit more too than when it's in the camera mount, but no big deal. It works. Now let's look at it on my wife's compound microscope, see how it works on that. My wife's little AM scope, I don't know what the model is. I don't really play around with this thing much, but this one doesn't have a camera mount, so we're going to be mounting this into the eyepiece. Again, we've got the 0.5C mount adapter on. And this works really slick. Slides right in. Focus whatever we're looking at here. Some kind of a stem. But as you can see, it works fine uh, with that as well. Just slide it right in. So no problems at all with compatibility. Seems to work great with pretty much any, any scope, as far as I can tell. Really happy with the imaging. Now, on the imaging, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually record some. We can look at it on the monitor, but to get a good idea, I'm going to record um, some footage, and we'll just look at that real quick on both the uh, stereoscope and the compound here. When you hook the camera up to your computer, it shows up as basically a webcam and then you could view the images that way with your webcam image capture software, whatever you're used to. Or you can record it right on the card and it'll take up to a 64 gig SD micro SD card. I've got a 32 in there right now. So when you want to record on the card, you just press the record button, the little camera will come up and then you hit the start button and the little red light will blink and it starts counting and the blue LED Jeez, are we seeing that? It also blinks. Come on. There. And then you can do whatever you want to do on your image. As far as light goes, this camera, it's auto exposure, of course. But if your eyes can see it fine, the camera's going to see it. You know, I'm turning it right down here. You know, it's so dim now, I can, I can hardly see this through the viewfinder of the microscope, through the eyepiece. But the camera's still picking it up. And now it's getting too bright in the eyepiece for my eye, but the camera is still auto exposing it down. Let's put the dark field filter into place. I think this is one of the coolest things you can get for a compound microscope is a dark field filter. It basically puts a dark background behind your uh, specimen and you can see a lot more neat stuff. On some specimens, some you can't. But uh, that looks really cool. Let's go to it. Better magnification, what are we here, a hundred times. And I'm recording all this, so we'll look at this later in the record. But uh, that gives you an idea of how sharp the image is on the monitor. Micro SD card is out of the camera, and uh, we've plugged it into the computer here, so we'll open it up. And as you can see, it automatically creates two folders, one for photo files and one for movie files. Photo files are saved in JPEG format, 3.8 meg for a single photo, so it's a pretty high quality image. 
just show you what these are. This is on the uh, stereoscope. It's just a little battery label. Shows all the uh, little pixels of the printing process of the label. And then there's that uh, plant stem on the compound microscope. I'll go into the movie files here. Take a look at it. So movie files are recorded in MP4 format. And again, HD images, so or HD video. So file size is fairly big for such short little recordings. Let's look at the uh, stereo microscope recording first. So here I'm just doing a quick little demo of what it might look like. Adding some flux to this chip. And I'm just going to reflow the solder on the uh, pins. And like I was saying earlier, what you see through your stereo microscope eyepiece is definitely sharper. And of course, you've got depth of field. This is very flat, but it is workable. And on that note, too, uh, very low latency. You know, what I was, when I was moving the iron, uh, it was happening pretty much in real time on the monitor. So you could certainly use it as a working uh, method, you know, to uh, to use the monitor. So we'll look at the other one on the compound microscope here of that uh, plant stem. So this is the exact same one we had taken earlier. This is what was recorded on the card. I'm just going to advance to where we got that dark field uh, filter in place. And what's impressive here is the color saturation. Now, I can't get over how vivid the colors are. Uh, definitely more vivid than what uh, I can see in the eyepiece. So that's very impressive. I'd have to say that the camera, I'm actually, it's more impressive with the compound microscope than it is with the stereo. Of course, the stereo, you're losing you know, the depth, and that's one reason. But just can't get over how great this looks. So again, I just want to thank uh, Banggood for sending this camera to me. You know, I've been wanting one of these for a long time and really happy with it. And I think what's the neatest about it is it's very versatile. You can get just the camera with a separate lens to look at stuff close up. It comes with a little stand. Or, of course, you can get it with the eyepiece adapters for microscopes. So it's very adaptable and, you know, it's something that you could get just the camera. If you don't have an optical microscope, you could just get the camera with the little close-up lens and use it like that. And then if you ever did get an optical scope, you can use it with that. So extremely versatile camera. And, you know, for the price of around 130 bucks for the whole kit, uh, 16 megapixel camera that can do all this decent so i'm gonna have product links again below in the description and uh yeah very impressed with it very happy cheers folks have a good one